So kidney cancer is not a single disease. It's made up of a number of different types of cancer, including clear cell, type, uh, type 1 and type 2 papillary, chromophobe, and genetically abnormal RCCs, including oncocytoma. Let's take a look at the evolving role of whole, whole genome sequencing, whole exome sequencing, and DNA methylome profiling and transcriptome sequencing in kidney cancer. So Nizar, let, let's, let's talk about um, personalized medicine and, and whether we're ready for personalized medicine in RCC and whether we need to be integrating uh, some uh, molecular testing of the pathways that can inform us through actionable mutations or other options. How, how are you approaching that at Anderson? So the current status for uh, uh, our approach to treating patients with RCC and when do we uh, uh, integrate genomic uh, mutation analysis is in that patient with refractory disease after several lines of therapy. So we do uh, the foundation medicine, we use the foundation medicine, foundation one uh, platform. And, uh, and again, it is to look for a uh, gene aberration, a mutated gene that's actionable that we have a clinical trial for. And uh, one of the patients uh, that I've uh, recently treated uh, He's survived six years, and we've been through every target agent, including uh, immunotherapy initially with high dose IL-2. He still has an ECOG-1. So we did uh, a, a genomic analysis of his tumor, and we found uh, uh, ERB gene mutation on him. And we have a clinical trial uh, with uh, a novel uh, ERB-2 uh, uh, inhibitor that we will be enrolling him on. So this is the uh, scenario where we're, we're using genomic analysis. Another way of uh, incorporating genomic analysis uh, is in the um, difficult to diagnose, the challenging diagnosis, where we have a non-clear cell histology, unclassified, for example. And uh, we, this is where you could find if this is uh, a, a clear cell histology, if this is a VHL driven disease because of VHL mutation or whether it's uh, papillary with a plus seven or, uh, um, you know, one of the maybe CMET uh, inhibitor. Another uh, uh, scenario would be that patient with papillary type 1 RCC to see if they have um, uh, the CMET mutation and uh, this would be a patient that would be uh, enrolled on a CMET inhibitor, and we have several in the clinic. These, so, so I mean, again, trying to be a little provocative, but not overly provocative. I mean, we have frontline therapies. We have standard of care second-line therapies. We have no third-line therapy that's FDA approved. Do you think we're ready in kidney cancer for us to do a genome sequence directed trial in this population of patients between alternative standard of care and directed therapies in a, from an experimental therapeutics perspective? Brian? I mean, I don't think so only because we don't have the therapeutics, you know. So um, we have some experience with the Foundation One test, and I think, you know, obviously that's a whole separate topic of genome directed therapy. but. Um, we can identify a lot of abnormalities. They may or may not be driver mutations. They may or may not be involved. Um, but unless we have drugs to target them, then it's not going to really matter. And I think we're a long way from having a, a, a large number of drugs that target what we find. So it would be hard to do that trial because you'd get a lot of mutations and you'd either have to find clinical trials for them like your patient. You might find somebody with, you know, a met uh, mutation or whatever, you know, HER2 amplification, something where you have a drug, but I think most of what you find is just mutations without, they're not actionable because they're there's no drugs. Yeah, they're not druggable yet. Dan? Yeah, and you know, the funny thing about kidney cancer is that we have a lot of loss of function mutations, right? We have a lot of tumor suppressor genes being knocked out, uh, two, three, four of these in some cases, and yet we don't see a lot of activating mutations uh, in this disease. So I think, you know, identifying, I wouldn't say it's as much we don't have the drugs, we don't have the targets. You know, more often than not, we're doing these analyses, and there's not a, a clear target that's coming back. Now, ERB2 is great, and it would be wonderful to see that. It's just not that frequent that we get a, a case like that. You know, sort of the, you know, a PI3 kinase mTOR, TORC1 kind of biology might be our, our, our best lead, and that's maybe 10 or 15 percent. So I think at, at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I, I don't know where we're there yet in our sophistication, and with this disease in particular, I think we're really going to have to understand the biology of these tumor suppressors much more 
in order to really figure out how to build on the VEGF targeted approaches.